This video is going to walk us through the gross method of recording uh, our notes receivable. So in the last video we talked about how to calculate the present value of a note. Now once we have that present value, we need to figure out how do we deal with the journal entries. There's a couple of things that uh, are important to note, uh, and we need to keep in mind those relationships we talked about in the other video uh, between stated rate and market rate and how that um, interacts with your present value. Uh, but when we're recording notes, like I said, there's two methods. There's the gross and the net, and we're going to focus on the gross method in this video. So we're going to start with this one example. Basically, uh, there's no overheads. I'm just going to walk through an example with you and I'll show you all the journal entries that are required and how we work our way through those computations. All right. So in this example here, uh, let's pretend that we've done service work for someone. Okay, so we've gone out and we've done work for someone, and instead of them paying us cash, or instead of us setting up a receivable, an accounts receivable, we've taken back this note. The note receivable sits at $20,000, okay? It was issued to us on January 1st, 2006. The note carries a stated rate of 2% when the market rate is 8%, uh, and it's a three-year note, all right? So our requirement here is going to be calculate the present value and record all required journal entries for the three-year period. So that's what we're going to try and do here. So the first thing that I would do is, is I would take a look at the stated rate. I know that I use that rate, if you remember, one time and one time only, and that's to calculate the payment amount. How much are we going to get paid on an annual basis from this note? Right? So the periodic... payment is what we get paid every year. It's a function of the face value of the note, which is $20,000, and the stated rate, which is 2%. So we earn 2% on this note every year that we hold it, which means that the annual payment is $400 a year. So we earn $400 in interest on this $20,000 note every single year. Okay. That's the one and only time that I use that stated rate. So if this was me, I would get rid of that stated rate. I'd cross it out so that I didn't accidentally use it again. Okay? So now that's crossed out, I know the only rate that I'm going to use for the rest of this question, whether it's to calculate present value or what you'll see here, what we have to do uh, with regards to interest calculations, we're always going to use the market rate. Okay? But first things first, let's calculate the present value of this note. Okay? Um, most of you are familiar from your math classes uh, with using your BA2 plus or your, your financial calculator, okay? So you can calculate present value, uh, if you remember from the last video, uh, we can do it using the NIY PV payment and future value buttons on your uh, BA2 plus. So let's walk through that first. So in this case, if you're putting this into your calculator, N is the number of periods, and this is obviously a three year note, so my N equals three. Okay. Um, my IY is the interest rate. Okay, they're looking for an interest rate here, and again, the interest rate that they're looking for in is the market rate. It's not the stated rate. That it, we've already used it, and we know that's only used once. So that market rate is the number we're going to use here. That eight percent. Right. The present value we don't know. Right. That's what we're trying to calculate. The payment uh, is that four hundred dollar interest payment that we're going to get every year. So I plug that in as my PNT. And then the face value, the future value of the note is $20,000. That's what we're going to get paid when the note matures, right? So if you add all that in and you hit compute PV, you'll end up with $16,907 as your present value, okay? If you ended up with something different, go back and watch the present value uh, video uh, to refresh your memory on how to calculate the PV, right? So you can do it in... Uh, using your calculator. You can also do it using Excel, using that PV function, right? So if you type in equals PV and open the bracket, it comes up with this nice little pop-up here, tells you exactly what it's looking for. First thing it's looking for is the rate, and again, we're going to use the market rate, which was 8%. Uh, it's asking for the number of periods next, which is 3, so I click on uh, the 3. Uh, hit my comma, and the next uh, item it's looking for is the payment amount, which is the $400 interest, interest payment that we get each year. Uh, last item, the next item, is the future value of the note, which is $20,000. And then this last item here, type, you can either ignore it, because for our purposes, we're always going to assume that payments are at the end of the period. And if you ignore it, it defaults to end of period. Or if you want, you can type in a zero there. 
um, and that will tell it that the payments are being received at the end of the period. Okay. The only other thing I do after this is I multiply it by negative 1 to make it a positive number when it pops up. But there again is your 16,907. And there's some pennies in there, but don't worry too much about the rounding. So 16,907 is the present value of that note. Okay? So that's PV. That was step one. Now we can actually get into recording the present value of this note. Okay? So using the gross method, um, the gross method sets the note up at its full face value. Even though we're the value of this note in today's terms, right? Because of the time value of money and the relationship between the stated and market rate. Um, even though this note is only worth 16907 under the gross method, we're going to set the note receivable up at its full face value, which is 20000 Okay, so let's start by doing that. So we're going to set up, we're going to debit note receivable for $20,000. So on January 6th, this is to record the receipt of this note receivable. Okay, so we debit note receivable for the full face value, which is $20,000. Okay? Um, if you remember in the intro, I said that we were accepting this note back for services rendered. So typically, if we had done work for someone, we would have invoiced them, we would have debited AR, and we would have credited service revenue, right? So instead of AR, we're accepting back this note. Uh, so now we have to record an offset to our revenue. But here's the trick. That credit to your revenue, okay, is always going to be the present value of the note. So when you credit sales here, or sales revenue, or revenue, whatever you want to call it, when we credit that revenue, it's always equal, the credit is always equal to the present value. Whether you're doing the gross or the net method, the present value is always equal, or sorry, the sales revenue is always equal to the present value of the note. Okay, so we debit note at the gross amount, we credit sales at the present value, okay, that will be the same every single time, whether it's the gross or net method, but now we need an offset. Right? We have an unbalanced entry here, and if you look at it, we need $3,093. So what is that? Well, under the gross method, that $3,093 represents the discounted price we received or on that note. Right? So we received a $20,000 note back and effectively only did $16,907 worth of work to get it. Okay. So we debit note, credit sales for the present value, and the difference between the two is my discount on the note receivable. Okay. So here's a change for this semester. We're going to focus on the effective interest rate method for dealing with the amortization of that discount. Right. Let's let's just think about this logically for a second. Let's look at what's going to happen over the next three years. So on January first, we accept this note at twenty thousand dollars. And then what's going to happen is each year for the next three years, we're going to get a $400 interest payment, right? And then at the end of that third year, they're going to pay us out the face value of the note. So by the end of that third year, the net book value of the note has to be $20,000 on my books. Because when they pay me that final payment, all I'm going to do is debit cash for $20K and credit note receivable for $20K. So this little discount I set up right here has to be gone. Why does it have to be gone? Because the discount is a contra account to the note. So when I look at my balance sheet presentation, in the assets section of my balance sheet, right, and this will be long term because it's three years, right, but I'm going to show a note receivable, right, in my, invest in my uh, investments, long term investments. So I'll show a note receivable, and then I'll show less discount on note receivable for 3093 So the net book value of this note right now after doing this journal entry, is 16907 the present value okay so over the course of the next three years what we have to do is we have to get rid of this discount so that the net book value of the note is simply this twenty thousand dollars by the end of the three years how do we get rid of the discount right we're not going to use a straight line method which means we're not going to take this three thousand and ninety three and divide it by the three years like I said we're going to use what's called the effective interest rate method so let's take a look at December 31st 2006 at this date, this is the first payment date. So we've held this note for a year. <laughs> so we've held this note for a year. So what's going to happen? The customer is going to make a payment to us, right? The customer is going to pay us $400. So let's let's get that out of the way. That's an easy part of the journal entry. We're going to debit cash for $400. 
Okay, the customer's going to make a payment to us. Here's where it gets a bit tricky, okay? Because we have to record our cash, and then we have to record interest revenue, but the credit to interest revenue isn't the $400 cash payment we received. The credit to interest revenue is a calculation. The way that we get our interest revenue at every cash payment date is to take the net book value of the note, so I have to take the net book value of the note, and I have to multiply that by the market interest rate. Okay? That's how I calculate my interest revenue. All right? So what's the net book value of the note right now? Well, we set a note up on our books at $20,000. Okay? We currently have a discount of $3,093, which means that the net book value of the note on my books is $16,907. So I'm going to take that net book value of the note, right, 16907 I'm going to take that value of the note, which is 16907 and I'm going to multiply it by the market interest rate of 8%. Okay. So when you run that math, you do 16907 times 8%, you find that your interest revenue uh, that needs to be recognized is $1,353. So quite a bit more than the cash that you received, right? So we record the cash, uh, we calculate and record the interest interest revenue, and then we have a difference. The difference to balance this entry is a debit of $953. That debit is the amortization of the discount, right? So record your cash, calculate and record your interest revenue by taking the net book value of the note times the market interest rate, and then plug the difference to your discount. What does this debit to the discount effectively do? It reduces this discount on note receivable. Remember, we're trying to get that thing to disappear by the time we get to the end of the three year cycle. So $3,093 credit minus $953 debit means that if you look down here, the discount is now after this journal entry sitting on our books at $2,140. Okay? You do that same cycle every interest payment date, okay? So if you think you're ready, pause the video right now and try and do the journal entry for December 31st, 2007, and then restart it. But I'm going to keep going, and we're going to take up the December 31st of 2007 entry now, okay? So another year has passed. So we're December 31st, 2007. The customer's paid us another, is going to pay us another $400 interest payment. So we're going to debit cash again for 400 bucks because that's the cash we pay. That amount never changes. It's based on the stated rate of the note, and it's the same every single year. They make a $400 cash interest payment to us. So let's debit cash for $400. The second thing that I do is I credit interest revenue. Okay, But again, my interest revenue has to be calculated. And if you remember, interest revenue is net book value of the note, times the market interest rate. But the net book value of the note is different now because we amortized the discount a little bit, which effectively increased the value of the note. How does it do it? Well, let's take a look. The note is still on my books at $20,000, right? So we've got a note receivable over here for $20,000. But the discount uh, at, the, at the end of the first year was sitting at $3,093. But once we posted that debit to the account, it dropped the discount down to 2140 So my net book value is actually sitting on my books now at 17860 right? So my calculation for interest revenue for the second year is going to be that 17860 times the market rate of 8%. Notice we're not using stated rate anymore. We used it the one time and one time only. Everything else is market rate, all right? So my interest revenue, if you run that math, should be $1,429, okay? Again, we have an unbalanced entry. We've got a $400 debit, a $1,429 credit. To balance this off, we need a $1,029 debit. We're going to post it to the discount on note receivable, okay? 
So again, we're working our way towards getting rid of that discount altogether. All right. Okay, in the final year, two things are going to happen. We're going to get another interest payment, and we're going to get the payout of the note. You can combine these entries. For ease sake and for understanding, I would recommend you leave them separate. Show them to me in two separate parts. The first thing I'm going to do is record the cash payment that we receive for interest. The second thing I'm going to do is record the payout of the note. Okay. So again, at the end of the third year, we're going to get a cash payment for interest in the amount of $400. So I'm going to debit cash for $400, right? And then I need to calculate and record my interest revenue. Same rules apply. Interest revenue is calculated as the net book value of the note times the market interest rate. So what's the net book value of the note? We have to figure that out. Well, the note's still on our books at $20,000. That hasn't changed, right? We set it up in the initial entry and it hasn't changed. But the discount is different again. It was at $2,140 after the entry from the first year, but we just reduced it by another $1,029. So $2,140 minus $1,029 is $1,111. That's what's left on the discount, which means the net book value of the note is the, book, the note receivable itself less the discount, so the net book value is eighteen eight eighty nine. Okay. If you're confused as to how we're re reducing that discount, draw yourself a little T account. Put the three thousand and ninety three dollars in there as a credit, and then post the nine fifty three as a debit. Post the thousand and twenty nine as a debit, and you'll see that all that you're left with is a credit of one thousand one hundred and eleven dollars. Okay. So if you get stuck, draw the T accounts out, and it should help. So we're, at a situ we're in a situation where the net book value of our note is at $18,889. Again, we know that interest revenue is calculated as the net book value of the note, $18,889, times the market interest rate, which is 8%. So if you run that math, you'll calculate that your interest revenue should be $1,511. Once again, we have an unbalanced entry and we need a plug figure here. The plug is $1,111, right? And again, under the gross method, that plug goes to the discount on note receivable. Look what just happened to that discount after we post that entry. We had a $1,111 credit balance. We just posted an entry for $1,111. So what's the new net book value? Well, the note receivable is still sitting at $20,000. The discount was at $1,111. We just cleared it out completely with this journal entry here. So there's nothing left on the discount, which means the net book value of the note is $20,000. We're now in a position where we can record our final cash payment. So the last thing that happens is they pay, the customer pays out the face value of the note. So we're going to debit cash, credit note, and we're done. Okay, so that's how the gross method works. It sets the note up at its full face value, records sales revenue equal to the present value of the note, and the difference becomes a discount. Then each year, as we receive our annual interest payment, we record the cash, we credit interest revenue by debit or by calculating or taking the net book value of the note times the market interest rate and the difference becomes a plug to the discount. Effectively, we take that discount from $3,093, we debit it all the way down to zero, which means that the net book value is equal to the face value, and we can record or receive the final payout. That's all there is to the gross method. So I would practice this a few, time, a few times. Go back, find some questions in the text. There's bonus questions or extra questions posted on FOL for you to use as well. Uh, but practice this repeatedly uh, and get comfortable with this method.